Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. Guess what? Guess what? Story time today. Story time. Happy Thursday. Throwback Thursday. I'm going to take you guys back into my college years, right? So a throwback to back in my college days. So so it's cut down day, right? We're talking 1990, August of, uh, not August, yeah, August of 1990 um, at UC Davis, right? So it's cut down day. And I have never, ever in my life to that point been so nervous about anything, right? This is the final cut down. Who made the team? Who had to go home? All right. So I remember coming off the practice field, right? UC Davis, 95 degree weather and walking down the corridor, right? Toward the locker room and on the board, on the wall was a listing, right? Of who made the team and who did not. And I remember looking at it, guys, uh, hands sweaty, nervous, wanting to throw up. And, and to that point, I thought it was the worst I would ever feel. Little did I know that years later, I would have that times 10 waiting for results of, of similar situations for my family, for my, my son, my daughter, my wife, for their test in life. But until then, that was, my, that was the, the, the culmination or, or the peak of stress that I had gone through, right? So I remember like it was yesterday walking down, I could hear the click clack of the cleats in the hallway and on the wall was a board, right, of the, I guess, 65 or so players who made the team and it was broken down by position. The quarterbacks, the receivers, the linemen, the D linemen, the linebackers, and then the secondary, right? So I'm looking at it and I'm nervous, right? And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. It's alphabetical. I don't even want to look at it, guys. I'm so afraid of failure. I don't even want to look at it. So I look at it and guess what, right? That little skinny kid, from Seaside, California, made the team, right? And not only did I make the team, right, but a sub part of that was the guys who got to stay and were gonna play for, for, on, on, for this season, right? Play in the 1990 season. Cause some guys made the team, but were redshirted. In fact, every freshman that year and most years had to go home the next day, right? They made the team, Right, the 100 member team, but the team for that year, the 1990 team, most of them, every one of them, except yours truly, had to go home the following day. So I, right, 17 years old, right, skinny little freshman from Seaside, California, made the varsity team for the 1990 season, right, the only, the only freshman to do it. So, uh, so I thought about it and I sat down and I wanted to cry. I was so, I was so elated. Right, and I was so excited to be amongst at that point grown men. Right, I'm 17 years old playing against guys in you know in the early 20s, playing with guys in the early 20s, and I sat down and all my dreams since I was eight years old of playing at a high level had come to fruition. Right, all those all those all those times running sprints, all those times lifting weights, all those times praying to get better, doing push-ups, doing sit-ups, all came to to, to fruition. Right on this hot August day in 1990 at UC Davis, right? So I sat down and, and thought about what got me here, right? What immediately, what in the, in the immediate uh, uh, history of my life got me here? And I knew exactly what had got me to this point where I was on the list of guys who made the team, right? So, so I flashed back the day before, the day before this results. The day before the list of those who got cut was the was the annual blue gold scrimmage. Right? So every football team in America has a period of time where they practice. Right? Back then it was double days, even triple days for us. Right? So you go through all this time uh, of grinding and pushing and sweating and bleeding with your with your teammates. Right. And with guys who are going to build a team and some not. But you're fighting through all this pain and adversity and competitiveness and, and just challenging each other and pushing and grinding for two weeks. And it all culminates in what's called an inner squad scrimmage. Right. Every team has their own red, white, blue, yellow, whatever your team colors are. They call it by opposing colors. Right. So ours is called the blue gold scrimmage. Right, so they, they normally divide up the starting units. So, so one team, maybe the blue, has the starting offense. One team, the gold, has the starting defense. So now when you're playing the game, you have ones against ones, right? First string versus first string, and then twos against two. So it's even. You don't want the starting defense and offense on the same team, right? It will be a blowout. So they, they even them out. So I remember being, I'm not sure, I was probably second or third string at that point, maybe. 
maybe third string, right? But I remember like it was yesterday, right? The moment that happened that got me to the point two days later or a day later where I made the team, right? So I was sitting there. I remember, I, I remember like it was yesterday, like it was yesterday, right? So we're playing, we're playing football. You know, they're calling out, you know, pass coverages. So in the secondary where I played cornerback, they call out coverages. And that, that's our schematical strategy to cover uh, the offense, right? And so all of our coverages had girl names, Sarah, Patty, Connie, right? So, so we would yell out what the coverage was. Let's go Sarah. Let's go Connie. Let's go Patty. And I remember being on the right side of the, of, of the, of the formation and our safety yelling Connie, or maybe it was Patty, right? Patty, 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 as the offense shifted over, right? So I'm going from right corner, right, having to drop back. Now I'm in the middle of the field in what's called Patty, Patty coverage, right? And when the ball snapped, right, all I see is a pitch, right, the ball going to a running back, right? And so he's going this way. I'm chasing him full speed. So I'm like... I'm about 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. He's about 10 yards. What's up, BC? He's about 10 yards deep, right? And so he's sprinting as I'm sprinting, right? It's going to be a collision. I'm running full speed. He's heading toward the opposite sideline, right? So I'm sprinting, and all I can remember, right, I see, I see his number, number 22. He's a gazelle. I mean, this guy was, was a physical specimen, right? Tau swinging, right? He's just running, right? And he's going. I, I can see him. He's going toward the sideline, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm maybe the last guy on, in, in this order of potential tacklers to get him. But I'm sprinting to him like in life. I'm sprinting as if I'm the only guy that has to stop him, right? There's probably six, seven, eight guys between me and him that can potentially tackle him. But I'm going after the play like in life as if I'm the only guy who has to do it. Right in life, you you have a team, but you have to approach every every single scenario as if you have to solve the solve the problem. Yeah, do your part as a teammate, but you approach it like you're the one who has to do it. Right. So it's in college, BC. It's college, baby. So he's here, right? He's running, he's sprinting, and I'm running full speed, full speed, right, ready to make the play. But I'm thinking about, I'm remembering. I see 22, and all of a sudden it registers. Right, so now we're flashing back. We, 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 we went from the, the listing of the guys who made the team, right? I thought about why I made it, right? So now we flash back to this moment that I think was the reason. But now, now that I'm running toward this guy, I see 22, I see the towel, I see the, the physical uh, uh, outline of him, the physical statue of him, and I remember who it is, right? Shola. Shola Ademo, I think I said his name right, African guy, right, African descent, 22-year-old, fifth-year senior, right, number 22, I can still see it like, like it's yesterday, right, physical specimen, 22-year-old physical specimen, about 6'1", maybe 215, 220, I'm, I'm lucky if I'm 165 at this point, right, but I'm sprinting to him, and I remember I mean, this is all going through my head as I'm running. I remember my first day at camp, two weeks before this moment in time, right? My very first post-practice shower, right? For some reason, I was late getting out of practice, and I, I get to the locker. He's the last guy. This, this person is the last guy in the shower before I go in. And all I could see was a grown-ass man, right? Wrist still taped up. Ankle still taped up in the shower, right? Physical specimen. And I remember thinking, I got to tackle people like that at this level? Like grown men like that? I mean, I'm tough, right? But I'm still 17. I'm still freshly out of high school. This is a grown-ass man. And so I remember kind of being scared of what the next five years would entail if I had to tackle people like that for the next five years, right? So I remember being awed impressed, and a little bit scared, right, upon what was going to happen in the next five years. Now you fast forward two weeks from that point, right, very first shower in college, right, seeing a guy who's a grown-ass man and being fearful of having to tackle him or people like him or bigger than him for the next five years. Now I'm in a moment in a game in the blue-gold scrimmage where I'm running full speed at that same guy. 
That same guy is running full speed to the sideline. I'm hoping that he goes out of bounds, please. Or somebody between me and him, maybe a linebacker, maybe a D lineman. I'm hoping somebody gets to him before I get to him. Right? Because I don't want to tackle this guy. I, I will. I think I will if I have to, but I don't want to. Deep down, I don't want to. But I'm sprinting. Right? I'm going full speed as if it's me and him only. Right? As if it's up to me to save the game. Up to me to save the play. Up to me to finish what we all started. Right? So he's sprinting toward the sideline. I'm sprinting toward the sideline. Number 22 is running full speed with a towel. Number three is running full speed with a towel. Right? So I'm running. I'm running. I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. I'm running. I'm getting mad. I'm getting pumped, BC. Right? Because it's going to be a collision. Right? Go out of bounds. Somebody get him. 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 Nobody's getting him, and he ain't going out of bounds. Nobody's getting him, and he ain't going out of bounds. We're talking about 215, 220 versus 170 maybe. Right? We're talking about a 20-yard sprint and a 20-yard sprint heading for the same location for a collision about two yards from the line of scrimmage. About two yards from where the ball's currently placed. I'm running full speed to hit his ass. Hoping somebody else hits his ass. Right? So long story short, I run full speed. I run full speed. Nobody gets him. He ain't going out of bounds. And BAM! BAM! I knock him out. Not out. I mean, actually, if truth be told, I hurt more than he hurt. Right? But I didn't back down. And we might have went this way, right? But I didn't go back, right? He didn't, he, he didn't die. I didn't die. And, and at the end of the day, he helped me up, tapped me on the helmet, went back to the, back to the huddle, right? So now you fast forward 24 hours later. That's why I'm on the wall. That play is why I'm on the wall, right? I'm, 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 looking, I'm, I'm sitting here in awe. Wanting to cry almost as I look at the wall and I see number three, B. Blueford. Made the team, number one. Number three, B. Blueford made the 1990 team. Only freshman to do it from that team. Why? Because I wasn't afraid to run full speed at somebody who I was afraid of. Right? I wasn't afraid to run full speed at somebody I was afraid of. Like in life. We're going to face things we're afraid of, but we can't be afraid to face them. Right? We're going to face a lot of shit in our life that we're afraid of, but we can't be afraid to face it. Right? So I'm going to flashback even more. So where did that come from, BC? You know where it came from, BC. Right? So that's 1990. We got to go back to 88. 88. Seaside High School. My first year in California. Right? Anybody who knows Seaside back in the 90s, while with the high school at, we hit. Right? They known for hitting. Have always been known for hitting. So my first day of practice, I'm not from Seaside, but I'm scared. Right? I'm scared a little bit because I, he I heard about how they hit. Right? So first day of practice, we're all together. Right? JV, freshman varsity. Okay? So we don't do these drills anymore. I mean, these are like... Like line up and go full speed at somebody drills. And they, they discourage that nowadays at all levels. High school, pro, Pop Warner. So the drills we did at Seaside, Oklahoma drill, head up drills, they don't do anymore. Right? But we did them back then. I mean, we hit every day. So we're doing a drill. Right? There's two lines of players. And all you're doing basically is lining up. One has the ball. One does it. And you hit. Bam! Next two up. Bam! Next two up. Bam! Right? So I'm in line, like everybody else. Right? I'm a little afraid. I'm, I ain't never been afraid to admit I was scared. What I won't tell you is that I won't hit your ass. I might be afraid, but I'm going full speed. Right? So I'm in line, ready to go. I'm ready to go. Right? When my, when my time comes up, all of a sudden, there he is. The guy who just went. Right? I, I won't say his name yet, but, I, but I'll say it later. Right? So now all of a sudden, okay... This guy's sophomore on varsity, badass. Known in Seaside as a whole family as a badass. Tough as nails, one of the best players in the country, 
right, on ESPN. So he he's up. Right? I ain't backing down. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Right? So we go, we go. Bam! We hit. Right? I'm in pain. He's not. Right? I get back in line. Right? One line is, 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 is longer than the other line. Right? So, so, my, so as it stands, I should be going against him again. But my second time through, there he is again. What's up, Chris? There he is again. Right? Why is he there again? All right. Let's go. Let's go. Okay? Turns out he's counting. He's like, where's Bobby at? One, two, three, four. Watch out, man. Let me get here. He's trying to find out where I am in line so he can hit me. Right? So the, a part of me is like, man, I want to, I don't want to go, I don't want to go against him again. I don't want to go against him again. Right? So a part of me is like trying to make sure I don't, I don't, I'm counting too. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm one, two, three, four. I'm good. Right? I'm going against this guy and not this guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Vince. Right? So now I'm like, okay. Okay, so after about one or two days of this, of him like figuring out where I'm at, me trying to dodge him, right, and him going back one, right, I finally said, you know what, I ain't running no more. I'm done running. Right, so the third day, I don't move. Right, I'm here, I'm four, right, he's five or whatever it is, or he's six. He changes in line, I stay right where the fuck I am. Am I scared? Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, I'm scared. But I ain't running no more. I'm done running. I'm done running. Because like in most things in life, he's going to find me anyway. Right? For the first two days, I ran. I skipped. I changed line. Spots, spots in line. And he found me. Like the, most things in life, he found me. So I said, you know what? I'm done running. I'm done running. Right? So, from that point forward, for the next two days, wherever, wherever I was in line, that's where I stayed. Right? Wherever I was in line, that's where the fuck I stayed at. And if he chose to get in line and go against me, then let's go. Right? And so I was afraid. It hurt. But guess what? But guess what? He stopped finding me. Right? Like day three, day four, wherever he was out in line, he stayed there. Found somebody else to hit and pick on. Right? So that was 1988. Right? Scared, but still fighting. Scared, but done running. That's why three years later, right, at UC Davis, I was able to run full speed 20 yards into what at that point arguably was the, the most physical specimen I had ever seen in my life. Was I afraid of it? Yes. Was I running from it? No. Was I afraid? Yes. Was I running from it? No. Right? So it turns out, right? My boy Vince, I still love him to this day. His name is Vince. He got in trouble. Right? He went to jail. Right, went to prison. 20 years later, he calls me. I have a son and a daughter at that time. He calls me from prison and tells me he remembers that story. I didn't know he remembered it. I didn't even know that he purposely did it or if he did it, he remembered it. He calls me from prison and tells me, what's up, Blue? I want to tell you I'm sorry. For how I treated you. I told him, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. I made the UC Davis team because of that. I fight things in life because of that. You know why? You made me stop fucking running. You made me stop running from stuff. Right? So he tells me that he recognized in me a young lion like himself. And wants to make sure that, that, that the generation behind him of Seaside Spartans was going to be as tough as he was. And relayed the same message to my son and my daughter about their daddy not running from stuff. Right? So, the message that I want you guys to, to remember is this. You're going to face stuff in your life that you're afraid of. I promise you. You're going to face stuff in your life that you want to run from. I promise you. But if you think about it and look back and be honest, it ain't going nowhere. 
Most things in life that challenge us don't go away. Right? Just like Vince, they find you in line. And if you change, they change. That challenge you're facing, if you change and avoid it, it changes to find out where you are. It ain't going nowhere. So at some point, you got to tell that challenge, that voice, that thing that, that, that you're fighting against, that you ain't running no more. You done running. Am I afraid? Yeah, but I ain't running. Right? Might you give me a black eye and a bloody nose? Yeah, but I ain't running. Might you embarrass me? Yeah, but I ain't running. Maybe I'll fail the business. Yeah, but I ain't running. Maybe she'll say no to me or, he, or he'll say no to me if I ask him out. Yeah, but I ain't running. Maybe I can't figure out this diet. Maybe it won't work again. Maybe maybe this, this diet will be the same as the last ones I did. Maybe, but I ain't running. I'm done running. Ain't you done running? Ain't you done hiding from that challenge, that obstacle in front of you? Ain't you done running from it? I'm done running from shit. I'm still scared, Pauline. I'm still scared, Rob. Stuff still scares me. I'm just done running from it. I'm done running. And what you find out, guys, whatever it is, what you find out, and I learned this the hard way, not the hard way, I learned this the long way, is that all those things you're facing in life, God knows that. God knows that. God, God the reason it ain't going away it's because God don't want it to go away. Right? I mean, you think that God don't see that in front of you? That financial challenge in front of you? That relationship challenge in front of you? That health challenge in front of you? You think God don't see that? He sees that. But he ain't removing it because he knows you need it. He didn't remove Vince from my life because he knew I needed it. To be who I am. He doesn't remove things from your life to make it easy. He knows what you need to grow. He knows what you need to be great. He got plans for you. He got plans for me. Right? We don't always know why or even what. All we can do is stop running from things and trust. I didn't know back then, obviously. I was that tired of running. But now I know everything in our life that's a challenge, that's an obstacle, is there for a reason. It's there for a reason. Right? And so the things in front of you that are scaring you, that are keeping you up at night, the obstacles, the challenges, finances, relationships, health, he knows it's in front of you. He can very easily remove it from you. But he wants you to grow. I want you to grow. And we can't do that if we run from it. We got to face it. We got to fight it. We got to embrace it. All of it. So that maybe not tomorrow or the next, the next week or the next month, but at some point in your life, you're going to look back and know that's why I went through that. Right? So in 1990, when I'm sprinting full speed to the sideline at this bohemian, this, this, this huge man that no one's going to tackle but me, I knew at that point that's why I needed Vince for this moment. I needed that fear and, and, and that bully, bully in a nice way, right? I needed to fight that fear to be ready for this one. God knows what's in front of you. God knows what's in front of you, what's facing you. He ain't removing it from your life because he knows what's inside of you. Right? God knows the, the, the shit you're going through. He knows the, the problems you're facing relationship-wise, finance-wise, health-wise. He knows. He knows what's facing you. He's not removing it because he knows what he put inside of you. 
And until you know what he put inside of you, he ain't removing it. And you won't know until you start running from it. Right? God ain't removing it from you until you know what you got inside of you. And you won't know until you start running. So stop running from it. I know it's scary. I know it's scary. I've been through all of it. I've been through all of it. I know it's scary. But it's in there. I'm telling you, it's in there. And until you face it and start running from it, you won't know it's in there. I know it's in there because it's in here. And I didn't know it was in there. I'm a skinny ass kid from Seaside who was 165 and had to hit somebody who was 220. I didn't know it was in there, but God knew it was in there. And God knew I had to face it. I had to face challenges in, in 88 to be ready for that one in 1990. I had to face challenges in 1990 to be ready for whatever was next in 95, 98, 2000. And so again, today's, today's challenge, you might not know why it's there, right T? You might not know why it's there. But you won't know what comes from it unless you start running from it. And all God wants you to do is fight back. He with you? Just fight back. Because again, he's back looking. He had the whole, your whole plan laid out. You don't know. I don't know. But it's planned. And it's great. I promise you it's great. So whatever you're going through, the challenges, the obstacles, the fears, the frustrations, financially, relationships, health-wise, he knows what's facing you. He knows what's opposing you. He knows who's hating on you. He knows that, but he ain't removing it. You know why? Because he knows what he put inside of you. He ain't worried about it. You worry. He ain't worried about it. He knows what he put inside of you. He ain't worried about it. I gave Bobby greatness. I ain't worried about Bobby. Little finance problems, little, 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 whatever it is, little business issue. I ain't worried about Bobby. I know how I made him. I'm waiting for Bobby to know how I made him. I'm waiting on him. He waiting on you. He wait, I mean, you are great. Right? So he ain't, he ain't removing the obstacles in front of you. He ain't. Until you face him. Until you fight him. Until you stop running from him. All right? So stop running from him. Right? You in line. Right? It's a one on one collision, a one on one fight, a drill between you and whatever you have facing you in life. It's, it's two lines. Stop sidestepping them. Stop avoiding it. And say, you know what? I'm done running. I'm done running. Stop running, guys. Go face it. Face your fears, your challenges, your obstacles, and you'll know that you have more power inside of you. More gifts inside of you. More strengths inside of you than you ever thought possible. But you got to stop running. Stop running from it. All right, guys. Love you. Have a day. Have a good day. God bless you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.